Learners Revision Show once again on Joy Learning Channel. As usual, whenever you want to enjoy any subject that you are in, then you must be on Joy Learning Channel. You are welcome once again to this show with me, Wisdom Agbesinyale, as we the one always. You call me, I'll respond properly. The exam is rolling, really rolling, and we are rolling alongside. And I hope you are doing well. Joy Learning Channel is solidly behind you, and we want to celebrate the success when all is over. On this show, we want to look at reactions of selected organic compounds. Every change that occurs is as a result of chemical reactions. So as we have organic compounds, they can also undergo chemical reactions. You may say, what is an organic compound? These are compounds of carbon, with the exception of the simple oxides of carbon, like carbon-2 oxide, carbon-4 oxide, the metal carbide and the cyanide, those ones are considered as inorganic. But any other thing, especially having the basis of carbon and hydrogen called hydrocarbons and other elements like oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus can also fit in. We can have simple organic compounds and we can have complex and of course very, very complex organic compounds. But in this show, we want to just look at our level here in senior high school. So if it is our level here in senior high school, then it has to do with simple organic compounds. I always tell my students that if you mention organic chemistry, you can do the chemistry of carbon compounds all your life three years in school without finishing. But here, we are just looking at introductory aspect for you to know that carbon is a unique element on the periodic table. Therefore, a whole topic has been assigned to it. And by now, I believe you know the reason why carbon has a lot of compounds. Right, so let's roll on. Let's look at problem of the day before we start the whole process. Question number one, name the monomers of the following polymers. Polystyrene, beta, polyethene, gamma, polyvinyl chloride. So these are polymers. And these polymers, they have their various uses, they have their various specific characteristics. So you have to name the monomers. That is the unit coming together to produce this. Question number two, perform one chemical test to differentiate between one betine or but one in and one betine or but one in one chemical test. Question number three, what would you observe when ethanol is boiled with acidified potassium dichromate? Question number four, metal benzene forms phenyl methanoic acid. Give the reagent or reagents and condition or conditions necessary for this conversion. And the last question for the day, name the organic and inorganic products formed when benzene reacts with iodine in concentrated triosonitrate 5 acid and heat. This is our problem of the day and I believe you have answers ready for me and that comes with a handsome reward from Joy Learning Channel. Great work must be rewarded as such. 
Right, so let's move on. First on our list, chemical properties of our canes. So if we are talking about chemical properties of our cane, then we are talking about reactions. Because the moment a substance undergoes a change, a chemical change, it means it is undergoing a chemical reaction. And of course, new substances are formed that will have different properties from the reactant substance. We talk about combustion. So we can equally say combustion of alkanes. Maybe you ask, what are alkanes? Alkanes belong to the family of hydrocarbons. I mentioned already hydrocarbon. That is compounds containing hydrogen and carbon. Don't forget, exam can easily ask you to define hydrocarbons. And you can find that in your session A of the exam. So if you are asked to define hydrocarbon, the question has been answered for you already. You just say that compounds or organic compounds containing hydrogen and carbon only. And that is hydrocarbon. And our case are hydrocarbons, and they have carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bonds. The carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bonds here means that the atoms containing the single bonds are in the sp3 hybrid state. And if it is sp3 hybrid state, then you should know the bond angle and then the shape of a molecule of Okay. So the shape is tetrahedra, and then the bond angle is 109.5. If you are following carefully, we have looked at hybridization, and we know all this one. So this, the molecule or a hydrocarbon can be given to you, and they will ask you to state the hybridization of the carbon atoms in that given molecule. So Take note of that. Now, if we talk about combustion, we mean burning. If we talk about burning, what comes to mind is oxygen. So, this thing is burning. So, let's have a paper, and then you strike your match. There is a source of ignition in the presence of oxygen burning will occur. Now, since we are talking about chemical reaction, it means new substances will be formed. So if our case undergo burning or combustion, what are the products formed? There are two things that happens here. You are either burning the arcanes, and of course, I want us to know that any time an organic compound burns in oxygen, products are formed. What are the products? So take note. Two things will happen there. The organic compound is either burning in excess oxygen or in limited oxygen. So if that is the case, what are the products? So when our case undergo combustion reaction in excess oxygen, the products are carbon four oxide and water. Those are the products formed. Carbon four oxide is colorless and odorless, so you may not see it. And then the water that is produced because of the high heat that is being given out, this will be in the form of vapor. And that one too, you may not see it. When this happens, the reaction is highly exothermic. So it's very, very hot. Taking a tour to the lab, we can use our Benson burner to burn glass tubings for the preparation of gases using delivery tubes. If we want to fashion delivery tubes, we want to burn it any angle you want, you can use the Benson burner to do that because the Benson burner 
produces blue flame. And that blue flame is very, very hot. That is why in your kitchen, you light your gas stove, it produces blue flame. So it doesn't dirty or blacken your saucepan. And it's very hot. Put food on it for some time. It is good for you to enjoy. <laughs> Once upon a time, an old lady said that if they prepare food on the on gas stove, the food is not cooked. She prefers using firewood. Meanwhile, firewood will dirty your, your saucepans. So she said the food or the cooked on the gas stove is, is not cooked. <laughs> Meanwhile, the fire there produced is hotter than that produced by firewood. <coughs> if the organic component, of course, are canes, burns in limited supply of oxygen, you produce three products. We produce soot, that is carbon, is black, and then carbon two oxide and water. So three products are produced. Don't forget, exam can ask you to Exam can ask you to mention the product when a named hydrocarbon is burnt in limited oxygen. So we we'll have carbon, we we'll have carbon to oxide, and then we have water. So three products. When there is incomplete combustion, you will see amber. Flame or yellow flame. That yellow flame produces soot. So if you put saucepan on such a flame, it will dirty your saucepan. Right, so we can have specific example. Say, write a balanced chemical equation when butane burns in excess oxygen. So Betaine, you know the formula of betaine. So C for H8 plus O2 producing. What are the products formed? We say excess oxygen. So I know that carbon-4 oxide will be produced and water will also be produced. The question says, write a balanced chemical equation. So if you write this, this is not balanced. You have provided the right reactant and provided the right product. So that goes for one mark. The balance will give you the other mark. So let's balance. I have four carbon atoms there. So I put four in front of the CO2. I have eight hydrogen atoms there. So I, I put four in front of H2O. Now balance oxygen. So in balancing, Balance the carbon first, balance the hydrogen, then you come and balance oxygen. So let's balance oxygen. Let's have the total oxygen in the reactant. So I have four times two, that's eight plus four. That's 12, you see, so that's 12. So all I need is to put six in front of O2. So the balance equation is C4H8 plus 6O2 producing 4 CO2 plus 4 H2O. Then you score the other mark. Take note. However, if it is limited supply, then you are going to produce C plus CO plus H2O. And this one too, you should be able to balance that. The next on our list is to consider radical substitution of our canes. Don't forget, we have already established that our canes are carbon to carbon single bonds. These people or this family undergo substitution reaction. Don't forget, our case undergo substitution 
reaction. Why do they undergo substitution reaction? Don't forget that our case can also be termed as or called paraffins. Paraffins because they resist reactions. They are inert, so they resist chemical reactions under normal conditions. So if that is the case, you have to create a harsher environment or conditions for them to be able to undergo substitution. So substitution just involves the direct displacement of a, an atom or a group of atoms by another atom or group of atoms. That's all. So if we are talking about substitution, and we said that our canes are hydrocarbons, then in that compound, we have only carbon and hydrogen. And carbon is the custodian of the compound. So it means that hydrogen can be replaced by a halogen. So what are the steps? Please, very important, follow carefully. So with the radical substitution, it means radicals must be produced because they are generally, generally in it, the arcanes. So because of that, you have to create harsher environment. Radicals. The radicals, they are highly reactive species with one or more unpaired electrons or one or more single electrons. So they are highly reactive. They are neutral species. Don't forget. They are highly reactive. And they are neutral species. So if they, comp they have unpaired electrons, it means the elect that electrons can be lost to create a charged particle, or it can be shared to form a covalent bond. So if they ask you, what is a free radical, you should be able to define that because you have learned it on Joy Learning Channel Revision Show. So the first step is to create free radicals. Don't forget, free radicals are in our bodies. They cause a lot of damage to ourselves. It can, it can create aging. So that is why we have to eat a lot of food containing antioxidants to take care of these free radicals so that you always look stronger and younger. So get to the fruits, get to nature and eat the fruits that contain a lot of antioxidants. Okay. So we have to create the free radicals. And we are using chlorine here as an example. Don't forget bromine can also be used, iodine can also be used. So this chlorine molecule in the presence of light energy breaks down. It breaks down through homolytic fission. Hey, homolytic fission, yes. Homolytic fission. Homo means one. Lytic means lysis. Lysis means breakdown. Uh -huh. Or to split. So this chlorine molecule will break down. Only if there's a word like that. <laughs> so it means here the homolytic fission is a process where a covalent bond breaks. And then the bonding electrons are equally shared by the fragments. It's as simple. Don't forget, someone can ask you to define homolytic fission. Or what is homolytic fission? So a process in which a bond breaks and the bonding electrons are shared equally by the fragment. So when the bond breaks, we produce fragments. So 
the in homolytic fashion, if you want to illustrate it, you use half arrow to illustrate. So we have that, then we have that. In organic mechanism, arrows are very, very important. But at this stage, our interest is not in mechanism. Our interest is reactant product, reactant product. That is the only thing you should focus on. Mechanism, as you go higher, you will go and meet organic mechanism. Very, very interesting course. So the half arrow means that the bonding electron, don't forget, the bonding electron involves two electrons. So anytime you see a covalent bond, there are two electrons there. So it means that since we said that the bonding electrons are shared equally, one of the electrons will go to this atom of chlorine, the other one will also go. So we are producing CO plus CO. Now if you put a dot there, then we say free radicals. So we have produced free radicals or chlorine free radicals. Two moles for that matter. Because we are creating free radicals in the system, there is an increase in the number of free radicals in the system. So these free radicals, because they are highly reactive, they will go and attack the alkane molecule. And that is the propagation step. So this is a free radical. So methane has structure like that. So here too, the bond between one of the hydrogen and the carbon will also undergo homolytic fission to produce free radicals. What did we say? We say free radicals can share electrons to produce a covalent bond, or it can be lost or gained to produce ions. So if that is the case, then one of the hydrogen atom will cleave or will break as hydrogen free radicals and go and pick up this chlorine radicals to give us the HCl because we have hydrogen free radical, chlorine free radical. So two electrons gives us a bond, so HCl bond. If that is the case, we are creating the metal radical. So if we have the metal radical, it will also go and attack molecular chlorine. So the reaction goes on and goes on until all the hydrogen atoms are replaced. So this is just two steps of the radical substitution of our kings. So in this case, the number of radicals are unchanged. So since two radicals can combine to form a molecule, then from here we can terminate the reaction. And that is the chain termination. So two Free radicals can combine. So the metal radical can combine with another metal radical to give us ethane. Take note. And of course, we also have chlorine radicals. So that can also combine. So chlorine radical can combine with chlorine radical to give us the chlorine molecule or a chlorine radical can combine with the metal radical to give us CH3Cl, chloromethane, you see. So if 
the reaction continues, it means that the CH4, all the H can be replaced by chlorine to produce finally CCL4. CCL4 is an organic solvent in the lab that we can use. When we put bromine inside, then we can use it to test for unsaturation in our kinds and our kings. <laughs> Don't forget, the CCL4 is just serving as a reaction medium for the bromine. Bromine is liquid at room temperature. Now, when you expose it, it can easily go into the vapor state. So you cannot handle bromine alone. Therefore, you have to put it in an organic solvent so that the bromine will be able to be sustained for you to run tests when you so wish. Right. The next thing we want to talk about is the reactions of symmetrical arkene. Arkene. These people, they contain at least one carbon to carbon double bond. Now, since we are dealing with a multiple bond here, it means that there is a pi bond and there is a sigma bond. So, if that is the case, sigma bonds are stronger than pi bonds. So, if there is a reaction, you, the reaction will be on the weaker bond. So, the weaker bond will have to be opened as a result of the reaction. If that is the case, if the Pi bond is being attacked, then it means that whoever is doing the attack will add itself to the molecule. You see, if it is adding itself, then the reaction is addition reaction. Therefore, our kings undergo addition reaction. So if they undergo addition reaction, then we can talk about symmetrical arcanes. Now, if we say symmetry, a symmetry is when I divide something, it should give me equal halves. So, for example, if I have CH2, double bond CH2, that is the first member of the arcane family. If I divide here, what is here is equal to what is there. Then we say this is a symmetrical arcane. The under symmetrical arcane, you have to know a CH3, CH, CH. So double bond is there, CH3. So this is E thin. And this is 2. Between, because the double bond is on carbon 2. So if I divide here, what is here is equal to what is there. So the arkenes you have to know here is the ethene. We can talk about 2 between. The moment I specify the position of the double bond, the in there is indicating double bond, then it means that there should be another one. So we can talk about one between. The one between means that the double bond is on the first carbon. But one between is not a symmetrical arcane. And then we can also talk about propene. Propene is not also a symmetrical arcane. So the two examples that we should know at this stage is ethene, and 2 between, or but 2 in.
they are the symmetrical. So if there is a question on or from that area, then the questions will be on these two as symmetrical are uh, keen. So the first thing we can talk about hydrogenation. Before we continue, let me tell you something more, right? Uh -huh. So the carbon atoms containing the double bond, they are in the sp2 hybrid state. Don't forget. They are in the sp2 hybrid state. And then the arkenes, because they contain double bonds, and of that is causing them to reduce in the number of hydrogen atoms that they should pick. We call them unsaturated hydrocarbon. So the carbon atoms containing the double bond, they are in the sp2 hybrid state. And the bond angle, you should know, 120 degrees. Okay, so we can continue. So here, this is hydrogenation. Since we have established that our keys undergo addition reaction, then we can add hydrogen across the double bond. Or we can add hydrogen to the molecule of our kin. But here we are talking about symmetrical. So the first one is the C2 H4. So the double bond is at the center. So if I add hydrogen to it, then the products, take note, will increase by two hydrogen atoms. Take note. The number of carbon atoms do not change. It remains the same as the reactant. But the number of hydrogen atoms will increase by two in the product. So this one, you can even close your eyes and write the product. That is all you have to know. Reactant product. So since we said that the arkenes are unsaturated, then we are moving from unsaturation to saturation. The saturation here means that the carbon atoms have their maximum hydrogen atoms bonded to it. So since we have already looked at our canes, the arcanes are saturated hydrocarbons because they have their maximum number of hydrogen atoms attached to the carbon atoms in the given molecule. So this reaction needs a catalyst. So we can use platinum, palladium, we can use nickel for the reaction to occur. The catalyst, they provide large surface area for the molecules to be absorbed and that brings them closer to each other for the reaction to occur. That is the function of the catalyst here. So the next unsaturated symmetrical arcing is to between. And the same thing is happening. The product will have two more hydrogen atoms than the reactant. This is all you have to know. You don't have to go and be memorizing just uh, if the arcings are undergoing hydrogenation, it means that the hydrogen atoms should be two more than in the reactant for the product. So the reactant just add two hydrogen atoms because we have two electrons making up the pi bond. So when hydrogen, which is a diatomic molecule, is coming, that 
pi bond, when it is broken, it needs two hydrogen atoms. So anytime a pi bond is broken, two atoms are added to the original molecule. That's all. So if I have C4 H8, because this is 6, 3 here, 3 here, 6, 7, 8. So H8. Then the product will be C4 H10. As I said, the number of carbon atoms do not increase. Only the hydrogen will increase by 2. Then you have your product. So 2 betaine is giving us betaine from unsaturation to saturation. Don't forget, in terms of nomenclature, this 2 betaine can have substituent on it. So when it has substituent on it, please, the reaction is on the double bond, not on the substituent. So the position of the substituent will remain. So a question can be asked. Either complete the reaction or draw the structure of the compound formed when but 2 in react with one mole of hydrogen gas. <coughs> and you know that one mole of hydrogen gas has two atoms. Don't forget. Has two atoms. So those two atoms will be added when the pi bond is broken. Then they can ask you to name the product. So let's say if it is this, then the product is between. If there is a substituent, for example, let's say I have, see there, CH3 there, CH3 there, double bond, CH, CH3. This is two between, but there is a substituent. So if I locate my longest chain either this way or that way, the metal group becomes a substituent, also on carbon 2. So if the pi bond is broken, then our product will be structurally will be like this. Will be like this. So this one is the substituent on the second carbon. So to name this is going to be one two. So two metal between. Don't forget the reaction is on the double bond. Whatever substituent will be on the chain, it will remain in its position. So if you have the saturated hydrocarbon after the addition reaction that is hydrogenation addition of hydrogen atoms then you name it as such okay the next one is bromination addition of bromine don't forget we are using bromine here you can use iodine you can use fluorine you can use chlorine we are using bromination because Bromine is very important in the test for unsaturation. So here, bromine is brown. 
then we still have a symmetrical R kin. So hydrogen, hydrogen. We say the reaction is on the double bond. And whenever a pi bond is broken, two atoms are added. So the two bromine atoms here are added to the two carbon atoms in the ethene. So we have our products like that. Structurally, the hydrogen atoms we have four. So one, two, three, four. Nothing has changed because the atom here is different from the hydrogen atom. So B R the here to B R. So one to the bromo ethane. This is brown bromine. This product here is colorless. So the colorless result is as a result of the dibromo formation. So the ethane here has decolorized brown bromine because of addition reaction. So the question can be asked, what would you observe when a thin gas is passed through bromine? What would you observe when a thin gas is passed through bromine? Or a thin gas is added to bromine, or bromine is added to a thin gas. What would you observe? All you have to say is that you can say the brown bromine decolorizes in the presence of ethene. So here it is observation, color observation, brown to colorless. So the marks, if you mention the color, of, because the question has not told you the color of bromine, but you know that bromine is brown. You have seen it before in your labs. So you just say bromine turns colorless in the presence of ethene. So there are two marks there. The brown one there, then colorless another one. This can even be question three of your practical exams. Ot A and B, they are done with their practical exams. Ila with Ot C. And I hope you are preparing for it. The bromination, we can also use bromine water. The bromine water here, it produces bromine hydroxide. So this bromine hydroxide attaches itself to the original hydrocarbon, that is ethene. We are still talking about symmetrical arcane. So it doesn't matter where you put the bromine or where you put the OH. Take note. The OH can be here, CH2OH, CH2Br. Or the OH can be on your right, BR on your left. Whichever way, because it is symmetrical. So wherever you put it, it's correct. Here too, this one too is brown. Then this is colorless. Take note. By here, an alcohol or bromine substituted alcohol is produced and of course specifically it's an ethanol because it contains two hydrogen uh, two carbon atoms but this is substituted
Then I have already told you that CCL4 is an organic solvent in the lab. So bromine and tetrachloromethane can also be used. I told you already that this CCL4 is just a reaction medium. So the reaction involves the arcane and bromine. So this one to the bromine is substituted. So you are creating a dibromo. The same way this one is brown. And then this is colorless. So don't forget. Either is bromine, bromine water, or bromine in tetrachloroethane. But if we are talking about these reactions, you cannot expose bromine to the atmosphere. The moment it's out of its container, it goes into the bromine vapor. So you may not be able to handle it for the reactions. But if it is bromine water, that one you can handle it is liquid. Bromine in tetrachloromethane is also liquid, so you can handle it safely. The next one is the reaction with hydrogen halides. So ACL, HBr, HI. We are still talking about symmetrical arkenes. So here too, because it is symmetrical, it doesn't matter where you put the halogen and where you put the hydrogen. Wherever you put it, it's right. So we are looking at two symmetrical arkenes here. It's either ethene or two between. They are the two symmetrical arkenes that you can fall on. So if not ethene, then it is two between. And the same thing will happen because it is symmetrical. The arkenes can also react with water. And because we are adding water, we describe it as hydration. So addition of water. This can happen in the presence of conch H2SO4, and then you warm or you heat it. So when you do that, you are producing an a canon. So if I'm dealing with ethene, then I'm producing ethanol. And of course, it is symmetrical. So you can put the OH on the first carbon from your left or on the first carbon from your right. You are right. You are correct. So somebody can write this and then somebody can do this. Both are correct. So if I'm using two between two, I'm going to have CH3, CH, double bond CH, CH3. Here too, I add water, or sometimes we represent it like this. That is acidified water. Then here too, you either put it here or there. It will be the same. So one who put it here will be correct. One who put it there will be correct. Please take note. All you have to know in here is the reactant. That one will be mentioned in the question. The reagent and the conditions you must know. And then you must know the product. Let's be aware that in organic reactions, they are specific and very, very selective. If I add this to this, this is what I must observe. If you add a different thing, you observe a different thing. So here we are saying that in the hydration of our keys, 
we need H2SO4 and heat. So if I should add any other thing, it may give me a different product. So take note. Sometimes the question can be complete the reaction. So let's say, for example, I have C4H8 plus H2O moving to H plus heat. Complete this reaction. So if I see it like this, I know that an akano will be produced because this is between. So the resulting product will be butanol. That's all. So the question can say draw the structure of the major product and name it. Or write the formula of the major product and name it. So all you have to do, I have C4H8 there. So when the akano is produced, look at what happens. I have CH2, CH3. I'm uh, sorry, CA2, CA2. Now look at the akano that is produced. There is oxygen and then there is hydrogen. So let's count the number of hydrogen atoms. In the reactant, we have four hydrogen atoms. But in the product, I have six hydrogen atoms. So as we have already established, the product will be two more in hydrogen than the reactant. And of course, this time round, there is oxygen. So if I want to write this, the product C4H10O or C4H9OH. So that is the formula. Now if it is a structure, then you can draw the structure. Formation of a diol or oxidation of R kings. Here we use acidified potassium permanganate and then a mild or at room temperature. Now this is colored. The potassium permanganate is colored, it's purple. So if that is the case, then when a reaction completes, the purple goes into colorless. And the colorless is as a result of forming a diol. So this is ethan 1, 2, diol. Any time you hear or, then it means there is OH there. So two of them here. This OH, they are functional groups. Or I can also see them as substituents. So if I see them as substituents, then I can name this as 1 to hydroxyethane. 1 to hydroxyethane. If I see them as functional group, then I will say ethane. One to die all. Take note of it. Or common name is ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is very important in the temperate regions. The temperate regions, water can easily freeze. So if you pour water in your car radiator, it can freeze. If it freezes, your engine will experience overheating, and that can break down your engine. So when they pour water, they pour ethylene glycol into the water, and that will not make the water to freeze. So the water can cool your engine as you travel across. Let's look at the unsymmetrical 
akin reactions. Here it's very, very simple. What do I consider? We consider the stability of the carbocation that is formed. So the carbocation is a plus charge on the carbon atom. When we say carbocation. If the plus charge is on the terminal carbon, that is the carbon at the end of the chain, we call that one primary carbocation. If the cation is on the carbon surrounded by two alkyl groups, alkyl groups, they are groups or hydrocarbons that has lost one hydrogen atom. So if the carbon carrying the plus charge is surrounded by two alkyl groups, then that is a secondary carbocation. And then if the cation is surrounded by three alkyl groups, I said alkyl groups because this group, this is a metal group, it can increase in chain. This is a metal group, can also increase. But the simplest one we are looking at here, and of course, at our level, is the metal group I'm talking about. If the carbon carrying the plus charge is surrounded by three alkyl groups or has no hydrogen atom, that is a tertiary hydrocarbon or carbocation. Now, the Primary carbocation is less stable than the secondary, and then that is also less stable than the tertiary. It's just like one person is holding you. You want to fall, and then one person is holding you. You want to fall, and then two people are holding you. In which of the cases will you be more stable? You just agree with me. Yes. That when two people are holding you, you'll be more stable than when one person is holding. And if it is three, that one, you are much, much stabilized to prevent a fall. So that is what is happening here. So that this carbocation is an intermediate leading to the formation of a product. Because from here, there is a substitution, a nucleophile will come and take care of that positive there. So it means that the product that will be formed will be a primary product. The product that will be formed will be a secondary product. The product that will be formed will be a tertiary product. Now, how would these things be noted? In organic reactions, if you are able to isolate the product, it means that that product is stable. If you are not able to isolate, it means that product is unstable. If you isolate higher percentage of the product, then you can say that that particular product is stable. If you can separate just a little, you can say that this product is much, much unstable. That is why it's not giving you higher yield. So take note. If you are able to isolate a product, it means that product is stable. So in the formation process, if there is the selection between a primary product formation and a secondary product formation, the secondary product gives us more, we call the major product. So if there is that choice, then the reaction will go in favor of the secondary product formation rather than the primary product formation.
So if we have the unsymmetrical arcing, <coughs> here, there is no problem here. It's only one thing. Let's say we are ruminating this propene. We are chlorinating this propene. There is no problem. Halogenating this propene. There is no problem. But if we are hydrohalogenating, that is, if we are adding hydrogen halide to an unsymmetrical akin, then there comes Markovnikov's rule. That says that add hydrogen to where there is more hydrogen and let the halide go to, let the halogen go to where there is less hydrogen. And that gives you the idea of secondary product formation. And of course, it is much, much stable. If the halogen is on the primary carbon atom, that is the primary product, and that is an anti Markovnikov's rule or anti Markovnikov's product. So, when the question asks, draw the structure of the major product or write the formula of the major product, when propene react with one more of hydrogen bromide, then you have to go for the dibromo product. Uh, sorry, the two bromo product, not one bromo product. If you form a bromo product, you will be wrong because the question says the major product. The major product will be a two bromo product. Are we there? Yes. So if that is the case and I give CH3, CHCl, CH3. Sorry, we are using bromine here. So CH3, CHBr, CH3. And then somebody goes for CH3, CH2, CH2Br. This is primary product. And that is anti Markovnikov's product. And this is secondary product. And this is Markovnikov's product. And since the question says the major product, and I know that Markovnikov's product is the major product, then <clears throat> this is correct. This one will lose the mark. So take note. And the unsymmetrical arcanes for the arcanes we should know at this level, we have to know the first member, that is CH2. CH2. Second member, CH3, CH, CH2. Third member, CH3, CH2, CH, CH2. You see, so you have to know one, two, three, which will not be too difficult for you to keep. And the last one here. We can have built one in or built two in. So if you know this, we are talking about reactions of our kings, then think about this thing. Very simple for you to keep straightforward. Okay. So using propene as an example, you can use others 
for you to play with it. If you go to the exams and it is there, just smile at it and provide answers. You are good to go. The next on our list, we want to talk about our king's polymerization. This is very, very important. Look around you. You will find a plastic something. Container, bottle, cup, plate, bowl, whatever. Mention. Just look around you. Your television set, the cover, the body of your television set, aside the screen, is plastic. You have drank water from plastic, or even as I'm speaking, and you are comfortably sitting down watching me, there is a bottle of water by you, and it's plastic. It's all from polymerization. Very, very interesting. So, you can, if you are moving higher and higher, you can opt for polymer signs. And it's very, very important. Ash form, latest form, all, they are, it's all about polymers. So, what is a keen polymerization? This is a process. Poly means many. And then merus, that is polymer. So merus here means parts. So polymer, it means something that has many parts. So if we say polymerization, then we are talking about a process. And of course, we are only focusing on our kin. So our kin polymerization, a chemical reaction in which our kin monomers join to each other without the loss of atoms or groups of atoms. We are focusing on only our kins. We can talk about polymerization in general. And polymerization in general can be either addition, polymerization, or condensation, polymerization. If we say condensation, what does it mean? It means uh, vapor is turning to liquid. So if I have water, vapor, it will condense to liquid water. So condensation, this is where the monomers are added to form a polymer with the release or loss of an atom or group of atoms. So when you are forming protein from amino acids, amino acids are the monomers of protein. If you are forming protein, uh, there is loss of water molecules. So, condensation reaction. So, the for formation of protein from amino acids is a condensation reaction. The formation of starch from glucose is also a condensation reaction. So, take note. But in the Arcane polymerization, it is an addition reaction because there is no loss of atoms or group of bonded atoms. So take note of that. So this is a typical example or general representation of the polymerization process. So this is ethene. And then ethene add, 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 to form large molecule called a polymer. The process is polymerization. So this is the polymer. 
because it is from ethene, then we can say this is polyethene. What you call polythene, 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 ting, 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 polythene. No, it is polyethene. Now, this is the raw material. So I want to create some rubber containers. All I have to do is to melt this raw material and mold it whichever shape I want, whichever design I want, whichever color I want, all those things are there. So you go for the raw material, polythene, and then you have to function it as you want for specific use or for specific purposes. Polymerization has to do with what do I want to do with the product that I want. So we have what we call retrosynthesis. You start with the end in mind. So what I want, then you start. Let's say I remove one of the hydrogen atoms and replace it with a chlorine atom. So hal halogenated arcane. So let me have C, C out there. So here it lowers with one H. So put the H there, double bond CH2. This is, so we are putting more of this together. That is chloroethene together. To give us a large molecule of the chloroethene. So I'll have C H C L C H two. C H C L C H two. So this is the polymer. Now this monoma here, the trade name is vinyl chloride. So if it polymerizes, then we can produce polyvinyl chloride. That is the PVC pipes you have been talking about. PVC pipe, PVC pipe. Now, it comes in various forms. We have the flexible ones that you can bend even through corners. That is technology. There are rigid ones. There are flexible ones. Depending on what you want to use it for, then you get what you want. That is one. What about if I decide to remove one hydrogen atom and replace it with a phenyl group or benzene group? So I have CH, double bond CH2. So let me put this one here. So that is the benzene group. So my variable, more of such. Don't forget, these reactions take place in the presence of a suitable catalyst. Depending on the technology that is being used, you design or you use the appropriate catalyst for it. Now this one will also undergo polymerization to form the polymer.
So if I remove one hydrogen atom and replace it with a benzene ring, I produce styrene. And the polymer becomes polystyrene. And this can also be used for specific purposes. For example, your toothbrush handle. You see how tough and hard it is. So that if you are brushing your teeth, it doesn't break. It is polystyrene that has been used for that purpose. Polystyrene can undergo extension. If it undergoes extension, then we can produce the styrofoam. The styrofoam, today, if you go to the Wache seller and she says, I want to put the Wache in leaves for you. You say, no, me as for me, I want pack. That is styrofoam, pack, where after eating, you can just tear it and throw it into the air. You see, that is technology. So life is becoming more convenient, but a lot of environmental issues because these products are not bio degradable. It cannot rot. It cannot decay. So it will create a lot of sanitation issues. So as we are talking about convenience, please let's control the pollution rate. When you use them, keep them well, discard them well, that, that, don't just leave them anyhow to go and choke our gutters. When it rains, then the rain is eh, ejecting us from our homes. So let's, irrespective of the conveniences that we want, let's not create environmental issues. So let's control as we use them conveniently. Right, so we can go on and on and on. So depending on what you want to use the polymer for, that will tell you what to do. If I replace all the hydrogen atoms with fluorine, it gives me another product for another use. If I replace it with a cyanide, it gives me another product for another use. Easy. So it's a whole lot. Now you talk about the, the non-stick cookwares. And now if you want to go and buy saucepans or cookwares, you say me, I want non-stick, non-stick, non-stick. Non uh -huh. Non-stick, teflon is used. So in the production of teflon, all the four hydrogen atoms are replaced by fluorine. You see, so when they use it to coat inside the saucepan, it sticks to the saucepan. So when you put food inside, it's serving as a layer between the Saucepan, the metal saucepan, and your food. So it means that the food cannot stick to the walls of the saucepan. So when you finish your food, nothing will stick, everything, even if the food burns, you just remove it and your saucepan you wash inside, you are good to go. Right. So there are more we can talk about polymerization and polymers. Let's talk about the R kinds. The R kinds, they are the triple bonded guys. So the triple bonded guys 
have three bonds. So if they have three bonds, then we will have two pi bonds and then a sigma bond. And we said that whenever a pi bond is broken, two atoms are added to the reactant molecule. So if another one is broken, another two. So it means that at the end of the day, for me to move from the triple bond to a single bond, I need four atoms to do that, to break down the two bonds, to move from unsaturation to saturation. This is also an unsaturated hydrocarbon. The saturation here is higher than in the case of the double bonded ones. That is the alkenes. So if hybridization, then the carbon atoms containing the carbon to carbon triple bond, they are in the sp hybrid state. They have a bond angle of 180 degrees, and then they have linear shape. Don't forget that. Our kings, don't forget, they contain at least one carbon to carbon triple bond. So we can look at examples. The first member of the arcane family, we have this, H there, H there. The second member, we can have C, H3, C, C, H. All right, if I want to indicate the bonds there, the third member, I can have CH3, CH2, C, C, H. Can indicate the triple bond there. So you can continue like that, like that, like that. Now, since we have four carbon atoms here, then this can be one ethyne. And of course, we have one, two, three, four. So it will be but one ion. So that means that the ion here is a triple bond. The one here means that the triple bond is on the terminal carbon or on carbon one. And then we have four carbon atoms in the chain. If that is the case, then I can have the isomer. So CH3, C, C, CH3. I can have that. So this will be built to I. Meaning we have three bonds on carbon two in the four carbon containing hydrocarbon. So these are the ones you should know. We have ethyne, we have propyne, we have but one ion and then but two ion. Take note. If say we want to talk about substituents, now of course metal group substituents, then this first member cannot take a metal group substituent. Take note. Because the moment you bring in a metal group the chain will elongate or will increase by one carbon and that will lead us to propyne. Propyne can also not take a metal group as a substituent. Take note, it can take other substituents. The halogens, they can be there, but not a metal one. The reason why the metal one, you have to be careful is that the metal groups can be or is the same as a terminal metal group. So if you don't take care, 
you may think that it's not a substitute, it's part of the, the chain. So most of the times, they bring metal group substituted hydrocarbons for you to name rather than others. Because if I put chlorine there, you can easily recognize that chlorine is a substituent. And if I put a metal group there, if you don't take care, you will think that there is no substituent. So you must open your eyes. And then the one betine, we are talking about substituent. One betine here can only take a maximum of two substituents. And that will be one, two, three from the right. So you can take a maximum of two metal group substituents. Take note of that. If we are giving you a name, so nomenclature name, this, and we want to bring in substituents, the only thing you can have will have two substituents. That is one betine. We'll have two metal group substituents. It can't go beyond that. So take note of it. Very, very simple for you to keep. And then two betine cannot take a metal group substituent. The moment you bring in a metal group, it means that the chain will elongate. So these are the little secrets that you should keep. When you keep them, you will not worry your head too much. Whatever you see, you should be able to analyze it there and there and provide answer to such a question. Because there's no formula here. You have to know it. And you don't have a lot to know. Just simple, simple ones, straightforward, you can keep. And then if you are in the exams and you meet something like that, go for it. But if you see it and you cannot easily provide answers to it, please don't commit yourself. If you are given an answer that will be wrong, it's the same as you have not answered that question at all. And when you go, please take your time. Read all the questions. Choose questions that will give you a maximum mark. You are not pleasing anybody. You want your mark. Get it. Let's continue. We can talk about oxidation reaction of our kinds. And of course, we have already talked about combustion reactions. So with a combustion reaction that is just burning, Reaction in the presence of oxygen. So as we saw in the case of the arcanes and the arcanes, it's the same thing. So you write the balance equation, that's all. Either we are talking about excess oxygen or limited oxygen. So you balance. And that's all. Don't forget that more concepts can come in. So you can be asked to calculate volume, mass, number of molecules, number of atoms, and so on and so forth when you balance the equation. So take note, you just compare more ratios after the balancing, and then you calculate what you are asked to calculate. It's not anything difficult. So the oxidation reactions, we can talk about combustion, and we can also use an oxidizing agent. If we use coal potassium dichromate in a basic solution or medium, then, for example, ethane can oxidize to Ethane dioic acid. 
retain the ioic acid or the common name oxalic acid take note of that because it is an oxidizing agent and in a basic medium the permanganate reduces to mno2 if you want the color this mno2 is black black powder it can serve as a catalyst for example if you want to produce oxygen from hydrogen peroxide this mno2 can serve as a catalyst to decompose or to produce your hydrogen oxygen gas from there okay now very interesting thing about this when we form oxalic acid we can in the practical chemistry we can titrate oxalic acid solution against potassium permanganate solution in the presence of H2SO4. Now in acidic medium, this permanganate goes into the Mn2 plus. So that gives you pale permanent pink. That marks the end point. So that is uh, interesting. Now, this is a weak organic acid. Therefore, you must heat the pipetted volume of the oxalic acid. You must heat it before you run the titration. Because it is a weak acid, you need energy to remove the H plus for the reaction to occur. So that titration occurs in acidic medium. And the only acid that you have to use is to use H2SO4. Why must you use H2SO4? You must use it because the H2SO4 helps the KMNO4 to reduce to the Mn2+. plus. That is why you have to use it. If you use ACL, KMNO4 is an oxidizing agent. It can oxidize the Cl minus to Cl2. So it will affect the titration. If you use HNO3, this HNO3 is a stronger oxidizing agent. So it will help the KMNO4 to oxidize the oxalic acid. So if you use that one too, it will also affect your tighter values. We can also have hydrogenation of alkyne and the alkynes we are looking at here is the terminal alkyne the terminal alkynes are alkynes with the triple bond on carbon one of the chain so if i have ch3 ch2 c triple bond ch this is a terminal alkyne. If I have CHCH, this is also a terminal alkyne. And so on. Here too, we are hydrogenating. So if I use one more here, it's going to break one of the pi bonds. So I'm going to produce a corresponding alkene. Take note, the reaction is on the multiple bond. So the chain remains the same. The hydrogen atoms will increase by two, as we have already seen. So if I have one betaine here, I can produce one betaine. If I have two moles of the hydrogen gas, I'm going to have four atoms of hydrogen gas, and that will lead me from the 
triple bond to a single bond. Take note. You need catalyst here as well. So from there, this can also go and then we create the final saturated compound that is betaine. So we are dealing with one betaine that will give us betaine. Don't forget, as I said already, there could be a substituent on the unsaturated hydrocarbon that is being hydrogenated. So the substituent is not affected. It is only the bond where the multiple bond, that is the point of reaction. Okay. So if I have CH3, CH2, CH... No, I want CH3, CH2, C, CH. So here, the triple bond is here. So all I need is to have two moles of hydrogen gas and that leads me to the production of betaine. So please take note. It can come, these things we are doing tonight can come in three ways. One, they can ask you to complete a reaction. Two, they can ask you the conditions and the reagent for a conversion, or it can be in a word form. Name the major product formed when but one I react with two moles of hydrogen gas. So you are creating a saturated compound. And but one I or one betaine will give you betaine when it reacts with two moles of hydrogen gas. So these are the things you should keep. So when you go and something like that is there, you know it already. There is no formula here. Provide answers and go. And please don't provide too much answers to a particular question. Look at the marks allocated to the question. They say state, and you see two marks there. Then you say that it's a whole process. Are you going to give you, let's say, we have five procedures there for two marks. Are you going to write all those things? No, 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 no. They are just asking you something out of it, straightforward. So they say state or mention, give, list. Then you give like that. They are not asking you to explain anything. Simple, simple, straightforward answers. Right, so hydrogenation. So as I said, from here, you have two moles and you go there straight. Don't forget, it's either written this way. Since the CH2 is repeating, it can go into a bracket. Please, don't see this as a substituent. It's just a repeating group. Anytime you see, say, CH3 into bracket 2, this is a repeating group. So CH3, CH3. Don't forget, if I see CH2 into bracket 2, it means that the CH2 is repeating twice. So don't forget, be on the alert. Halogenation is the same thing as we saw in the case of hydrogen. Here, it doesn't just convert like that, but you need a halogen carrier, let's say ion 3 chloride. This halogen carrier is a Lewis acid because it can accept lone pair of electrons. What is its purpose? Its purpose is to 
complex with the molecule of chlorine or the halogen to make it more electrophilic so that it will be able to attack the multiple bond. That is why you need a halogen carrier to bring about these conversions. So if I produce, if I'm using a mole of chlorine gas, then I'm producing, here, yeah, this one. CL there, H there, CL there, H there. That is this product. What I has clicked, this is a geometric isomer. So it means that I can also have that CL there. H there, CL there, H there. So this will be cis isomer and this will be trans isomer. So if they say write the formula or draw the structures of the isomers or of the compound formed when one mole of chlorine reacts with ethane. It means that you are having two isomers and they are geometric isomers. We have the cis isomer and we have the trans isomer. So if you are to name, then it is 1,2-dichloroethene. So it will be trans 1,2-dichloroethene or cis 1,2-dichloroethene. But if you are reacting two moles of chlorine gas, then you are going to produce the saturated, halogenated RK. So you can have 1, 1, 2, 2, tetrachloroethane. That will be this. So just play with them as you wait for your paper 2 exam. So with the non-terminal alkynes, that one, the bond is in the middle or not on the terminal carbon or not on the first carbon of the hydrocarbon chain given. So with that, it's the same thing. Here too, you need a halogen carrier to, for the reaction to occur. If I use a more, then I'm creating trans and cis isomers. Two moles, I'm creating a saturated, halogenated hydrocarbon. So I just play with them. This one, we are using hydrogen halide. Here, specific example is the HBr, for example. You can also use ACL. So with a mole, we are producing this. I use the structure so that you will understand it well. The two there, and then there is this, and there is that. So this is the first one. One more. So this is bromoethene. If I add another hydrogen bromide to this one, what comes to mind? Here you need to apply Markovnikov's rule. Send hydrogen to where there is more hydrogen. And let the halogen be at where there is less hydrogen atom. Simple. Then you complete it. So, in effect, I'm going to have this. So, hydrogen to where hydrogen is more, I have two here. So, this hydrogen here will go here. Then, the bromine will go to where there is bromine already. Like that. So, instead of you producing 1, 2 dibromoethane, that one will be anti-Markovnikov's rule. But 
to produce Markovnikov's product, you have to produce 1,1 dibromoethane, not 2,1. So if they say, name the product formed, when ethane reacts with two moles of hydrogen bromide or hydrogen iodide or hydrogen chloride, please, you are going to produce one one halogenated arcane, not one two. One two is wrong, anti Markovnikov. But one one is the Markovnikov's product, and that is correct. Right, so this is very important. As I said, this one you can easily get it in your question three of practical chemistry. Test for terminal alkynes. With this, what are the terminal alkynes? We can have propyne, we can have ethane. So don't forget, or one. Be time is also a terminal alkyne. So whichever one. You have to use silver nitrates in ammonia, which we call ammoniacal silver nitrate. Ammoniacal silver nitrate. And it gives white PPT with a terminal alkyne. And the, this is the product responsible for the white PPT. So this one is the white PPT. If the alkyne is not a terminal one, it will not give you white PPT. So a question can be asked, differentiate between one betine and two betine. So you have to use this. Or you can also use ammoniacal copper one chloride. This one gives you red PPT. So you either use this or you use this to differentiate. Take note. It's simple. So that is the this is the product responsible for the red. PPT. Okay. Thank you so much for sticking by. We are still preparing for the exams. The exam is coming. Please, you don't need to cheat in the exam to succeed. Just go by the rules and regulations because joy learning is solidly behind you. We want to celebrate your success with all the preparation and the learnings and the teachings we have done. We are praying for you that at the end of the day, you will succeed and we'll all celebrate. It's been good coming your way. Live show with Wisdom Agbesinia as with you want. Until I come your way again, please keep on the preparation. Enjoy learning. Take care and all the best. Bye-bye.